just to look at his uh, main injury here, he has some fractures of his pelvis, probably because when he fell off of the lawnmower, the lawnmower probably did roll on him and kind of compressed him a little bit. You have some fractures of your pelvis? Fractures of the pelvis? Yeah, this, this would be your hip bone, basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's why it hurts when I squeeze your, your hips. If you have some fractures there. First side. Yeah. yeah. First side. Yeah. I don't know at this point if you'll need any surgery for that. Some of those fractures will heal without surgery, and the, the orthopedist will take a look at your x-rays and stuff and, and see what they think. Don will now be moved to a room in the hospital, and tomorrow he and his family will meet with an orthopedic surgeon. In the meantime, Kieran Cullen and his injured finger are ready to head home as are the Lasinskis and their now comfortable and sleepy three-year-old boy. Many others have been treated and sent home this evening, while a few, like Dawn, have been admitted. But our show tonight isn't just about these folks and their health. It's about the health of this emergency department and the hundreds of others like it across the nation. Tonight has been a fairly calm night in the ER, but there are plenty of times when the demand is overwhelming. And hospital overcrowding is the number one issue for emergency physicians across the nation. If the hospital is overcrowded, it isn't long till the emergency department is overcrowded, mainly because we have to keep the people in the emergency department for long periods of time. Lots of hospitals are overfilled with patients, and those patients have to overflow to the emergency department. So emergency departments every year are caring for more and more inpatients for a prolonged period of time. The complexity of the cases also comes into play. Sicker patients need beds in intensive care and other specialized units. And if those beds are not available, they must wait in the ER where they can be closely monitored. And sometimes the backups are due to sheer volume of patients, volume which can jump at a moment's notice. Almost uh, universal across the country, it's uh, overcrowding uh, and just the backups in the waiting room and, and just not being able to keep up with the amount of uh, patients that come in. People are living longer and in need of more emergency care, but at the same time financial challenges have resulted in fewer options for that care. There are less hospitals open every year, less emergency departments open every year because of financial problems and the difficulty for smaller hospitals to stay competitive and, and be able to generate enough income to stay open with all the high tech uh, equipment that hospitals need to have just to be able to function. At Wimber, we have the Wimber Research Institute, and we have a lot of uh, technology that the average small hospital would never even uh, dream of having. Uh, so we can handle a lot more so than the average small hospital. But overall, the average small hospital, there's more of them closing, as you know, and I think they have less technical capabilities. Add to the problem of closing hospitals the fact that 46 million Americans don't have insurance or a doctor. For many of these folks, the ER is their doctor's office, whether it's an emergency or not. The emergency department is designed for emergencies. The vast majority of patients that we see don't have emergencies and, and, and don't even themselves believe that they have emergencies. Well, I never want to tell someone don't go to the emergency department. Do you know what I mean? Because we all know that sometimes it's the only safety net for some people who are not sure if what they have is really a true emergency or a real pro medical problem or what's just something in the course of a, of a longer term illness and that type of thing. But what I advise people to do is first of all talk to their doctors. Call their doctors and ask them what they think. I think there's a lot of people who are using the, the ER for their family practice um, care. They're, they're coming here with uh, very minor things that shouldn't, that don't need to be seen in the emergency room. They are not emergencies uh, and they either don't have family doctors or they, they uh, have family doctors but don't want to wait to be seen. If you don't have a particularly urgent problem and the emergency department's busy, Unfortunately, you're probably going to have to wait behind the people that do have the more urgent problems. We're pleased to say that wait times in Memorial's ER are statistically better than the national average and that we constantly look for ways to shorten your wait. Unfortunately, hiring new ER doctors is not an easy option either, at least when it comes to Pennsylvania hospitals. It's very difficult not only to recruit 
emergency physicians, but any of the physicians, and particularly the subspecialist. They say between uh, one half and, and uh, two thirds of the emergency departments, small, big, within the uh, Pennsylvania, does not have enough subspecialists to uh, do the admission of the ED. It's very difficult to get people to even look at Pennsylvania to come to work at as a physician, especially an emergency physician. The malpractice laws in Pennsylvania have really made it difficult to recruit some physicians to the state of Pennsylvania. One solution to the lack of new ER doctors just might be the creation of a new ER residency program here at Memorial. The three-year program, led by nationally renowned bioterrorism expert Dr. Michael Allsweet, will kick off in July of 2008. The residency program addresses two things. One is the need for emergency medicine physicians, and the other is that emergency medicine is the, jun the juncture between medicine and community planning and disaster response. Because anything that happens, be it a terrorist attack or a disaster, natural disaster, all of the victims are going to end up in an emergency room. We have huge volumes in this ER. Um, we probably are one of the top ten largest emergency departments in the state of Pennsylvania now um, and that comes with it the opportunity to be able to teach other residents on how to care for emergency medicine patients. Despite the challenges and there are many most believe that in a true emergency the care here at home is second to none. Well I've, I've practiced emergency medicine on three different continents in anywhere from um, uh, tent cities to uh, tertiary care centers in the United States. And I will say that the facility here and the staff that I've met uh, brings a quality of emergency medicine care that is rare in all of my experience. Uh, these people are very good at what they do. They are unsung heroes.